This is a practice exercise from page 102 in the textbook. Doing a stoichiometric calculation, starting with grams of two reactants, trying to figure out which reactant is limiting, figuring out how many grams of the products were produced. This is very similar to what we did in a previous video with the ice table. In that case, we had mole information, which was easier to use because we can only put mole information in the ice table since the change row in the ice table deals with coefficients, which are mole ratios. This case, we're going to have a few extra steps because they are starting us with grams of the substances. And when they start us with grams, we're going to need to convert those grams into moles. In order to convert grams into moles, we need to know molar masses or molecular weights. We can use the periodic table to find this out. Remember that we're rounding to one decimal place. So the molecular weight of zinc is going to be equal to 65.4 grams per mole. Well, the molecular weight of silver nitrate, AgNO3, is going to be equal to 169.9 grams per mole. Again, we need this information because we can only put moles into the ice table. So let's go ahead and get that ice table set up, and then we'll get started doing the conversions that we need to do. Anytime I do an ice table, I start by rewriting the equation. So I know that I've got zinc metal reacting with two moles of silver nitrate, producing two moles of solid silver and one mole of zinc nitrate. Can fill in initial change and end. Set up my table. Making a column for each compound. Okay. So now we're ready to start filling in information, but again remember that we cannot put grams in this ice table. We have to put moles in because this is about mole ratios. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to convert grams into moles. So we're going to start by doing those conversions. I know that I'm starting with 2.0 grams of zinc metal. I know that one mole of zinc metal weighs 65.4 grams, which tells me that I have 0 0.0306 moles of zinc. So that's going to go into my ice table. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the silver nitrate. I know that I'm starting with 2.50 grams of the silver nitrate. I know that every mole of the silver nitrate weighs 169.9 grams, which gives me 0 0.0147 moles of silver nitrate. And again, that's going to go into the ice table in initial because those are the initial moles for my two reactants. We start with zero moles of the products because they have not been formed yet, so it makes sense that we start with none. Remember that the change row has to do with the coefficients in the balanced reaction. Our reactants will have negative changes because we decrease the amount. So minus x for zinc because it has a coefficient of 1, so it's going to decrease by a factor of 1. Minus 2x for the silver nitrate because it's going to decrease twice as fast. We consume the silver nitrate twice as fast as we consume the zinc. The solid silver is going to form at a rate of 2x, while the zinc nitrate forms at a rate of just x. Again, that makes sense. The silver is forming twice as fast as the zinc nitrate. Remember that we have a division here between products and reactants. Our reactants decrease, so they have negative changes, while our products increase, so they have positive changes. The next thing we want to think about is the end row. In the previous video, when we did this with mole ratios, we actually theoretically calculated the value for x if each of the substances was a limiting reactant. This problem is actually a little bit easier. We can see this visually instead of doing the math. If you look at the moles of zinc and the moles of silver nitrate, 
you should see that we only have about half the amount of silver nitrate as we do zinc. So about half of that gives us the amount of silver nitrate. In addition to starting with less moles of the silver nitrate, we also consume it twice as fast. So if I start with the smaller amount and I consume it faster, that means I'm going to run out of it first. So I can be pretty confident, even without doing the math, that the silver nitrate is my limiting reactant, and then I'm going to end up with zero moles of it at the end. In order to do that calculation, we would have the 0 0.0147 minus 2x equals 0. That means that x is going to be equal to 0 0.00735 moles. So that is the x we're going to be using for all of these calculations. So for the zinc, that means we're going to have 0 0.0306 minus 0 0.00735, and when you do that math, you should get an answer of 0 0.02325 moles. And this is good news. If we had gotten a negative answer, we would have known that we've done something wrong because it's not possible to have negative moles of a substance, but since we still have some zinc left over, that means we made the correct choice for x. We can also figure out how much we have at the end of the two products. So 0 plus 2 times 0 0.00735 will give us 0 0.0147 moles of silver at the end. This answer also makes a lot of sense. We know that we started with this many moles of silver nitrate. We know that we consumed it at a rate of minus 2x, and we consumed all of it. Since I produced the silver at a rate of positive 2x, it makes sense that all of the moles of silver nitrate have now turned into moles of silver. And we can see that we're checking our work along the way to make sure all of our answers seem reasonable. For the last one, we're just going to have 0 plus x. So in this case, we're going to have 0 0.00735 moles of zinc nitrate at the end of this reaction. So it should be very easy for us to tell what is the limiting reactant and which one is the excess reactant. And we can use this information to start answering the questions. So the first question asks us which reactant is limiting. And we can tell that the silver nitrate is limiting because there was none of that left at the end of the reaction. The zinc is our excess reactant. The next question says, how many grams of silver form? Well, we know we're looking at silver, and we know we're looking at the end of the reaction, but remember that this piece of information here is in moles. Everything in the ice table is in moles. However, they are asking us for our final answer in grams. That means we're going to need to do some stoichiometry to convert those moles into grams. So I'm just going to scroll down to give myself a little bit of space. I know that I have 0 0.0147 moles of silver at the end of this reaction. I can use the periodic table to tell me that every one mole of silver weighs 107.9 grams. And if I do that math, check out my three significant figures, I'll get an answer of 1.59 grams of silver. So I know that at the end of this reaction, I'm going to have formed 1.59 grams of silver. The next question is again asking me for grams, and they're asking me for grams of the zinc nitrate. So that's another one of my products. I want to know how much I have at the end. But again, this number is in moles, so again, I'm going to need to do one extra calculation to change my moles into grams. So very similar to what we're doing before. I'm going to start with my 0 0.00735 moles of my zinc nitrate. Again, you should be able to use the periodic table to determine the molar mass, and you should find that one mole of zinc nitrate 
has a mass of 189.4 grams. So when you do this math, you should get a final answer, again, to three significant figures of 1.39 grams of the zinc nitrate. So we can just put that number up where they ask us for it. That was 1.39 grams of zinc nitrate. Okay, the last question is again asking us for grams. This time they want grams of the excess reactant. So they want to know how much is left over. There must be some of the reactant left over since I didn't use all of it, and we know that the excess reactant is the zinc. So essentially what they're asking us for is how many grams of zinc are left at the end of the reaction. So looking here, that's my zinc left at the end, but remember that this is in units of moles, so again I need to convert my moles into grams in order to answer this question. So starting with my 0 0.02325 moles of zinc. I know that every mole of zinc has a mass of 65.4 grams. So doing the math there is going to give me 1.52 grams of zinc. Again, I'm sticking with the three significant figures because three significant figures were how many I had in all of the original numbers that I was given. So at the end of the reaction, I find that I have 1.52 grams of zinc left. And I can write that in at the top of the page. So when you do these problems, I know they look like they have a lot of parts, they are pretty complicated, but you really want to make sure you have a plan, you understand why you're performing all the calculations, you know what all the numbers mean. I think the ice table is the easiest way to organize this information, and the biggest thing you need to remember about the ice table is that everything in the ice table must be in moles. That does mean that you're going to have to do a lot of conversions between grams and moles, but at this point those conversions should be very easy, very quick, you should know exactly how to perform them. So I would suggest using this ice table in order to figure out this information all in one place and then doing any conversions you need to get your final answers into the acceptable units. Again, remember that when you're doing answers for your homework problems and for the test, it's not enough just to show all the work. You need to have a few sentences in there explaining how you know to do these calculations. You don't have to have everything narrated, but you have to show more than just numerical answers. So explain how you know something's limiting, explain how you know it had a negative sign, explain how you solve for x. Make sure you're explaining as much as possible when you do these problems.